Hello, and welcome to Seattle at Dawn, a Mage of the Ascension Chronicle. I am the storyteller and tender of the Dahlia World Garden, Tim Dahlia. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we stream new episodes of the on the Dahlia World Garden Twitch channel every Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and you can watch our previous episodes at the Dahlia World Garden YouTube channel. Um, and those descriptions can, or those links can be found in the description. Um, we are um, going through our growing phase here. We have uh, done several episodes now of Seattle Dawn, and uh, each one I think we get a little bit closer to what we envision in terms of perfection. Uh, I don't think we'll ever get there. Uh, case in point, uh, episode 10 is not going to be in the playlists anywhere um, because we screwed up. The audio got all f mixed up and uh, couldn't really uh, present that to you. Uh, you wouldn't know what's going on because you couldn't hear any of us. So, or at least you couldn't hear me. So, um, we're not going to have that in there. But fortunately, uh, here in episode 11, I do a fairly decent job of recapping what happened in that episode and uh, continue from there. Um, sad that our milestone 10th episode uh, got screwed up that way, but hey, what can you do? Just got to roll with the punches. So we are. Um, if you like what we're doing here, give us a like uh, on the video, follow and subscribe, uh, depending on where you're watching us. And uh, past me is now going to introduce our mages. So uh, I hope you uh, enjoy, and I will see you back here probably in about an hour. I've got uh, uh, the stream chat open. Uh, I am here with everybody watching it live from what we recorded. And if you have any questions, of course, I will uh, certainly love to uh, engage with you and talk to you and all that good stuff. Of course, if you're watching this in the future, just leave a comment. I don't think we're going to really be able to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Anyway, that being said, uh, here are our mages. Cindy, how the heck are you? Who the heck are you? And who do you play? Hi, I am Cindy. Uh, pronouns are she, her. And I play Inea Blackwell, who is a techno shaman with the Kabadi. Um, she is starting to feel like she's getting a group together, you know, to work with that, mm -hmm. that she's, she's getting comfortable with. Um, but she has a whole lot of worry about that too. She's a guardian and uh, has a lot of people she's trying to take care of on her plate right now. She's probably spread herself a little thin. But it's starting to look like all of these things that she's been tracking um, are coming together in some way. So she's hoping that maybe she can take care of it all in one fell swoop because she should be so lucky, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a big burden you got going on there. Alex, what's up? Well, hello. <laughs> um, okay, I'm Alex. My pronouns are they, them. I play Jezebel Spinner. Jezzy is currently extremely excited to introduce her new friends to her family and to feed them all enchiladas because <laughs> it's been a long time coming. And mm. it's it's about time they all sat down and broke bread together, I think. Enchiladas are delicious. Yes, they are. Wait a minute, was that was that Polaris? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> of course. <That's> perfect. Of course. <laughs> and Bill, tell us about SAS and how you collected all of it. I guess that was last week. <laughs> you still have enough sass to you know, go around. So, anyway, tell us about yourself and keep, uh, who you play. I keep my sass in my pockets. Hey, you know, in my pants pockets. What well, comes in handy in a fight? Um, you know, your pocket sass. You just throw it in somebody's eye. Right, you pull it out and throw it. At, right, exactly. It's like glitter. Yeah. You can never get it out. Yeah. It'll be everywhere. <laughs> okay. 
I am Billy. I'm currently using they, them pronouns, but I'm still exploring myself. That's a good way to figure myself out. That's a good, good way to put it. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, I'm playing Charlie Newell. Charlie is a verbena and a mushroom witch. Um, he's got some alien problems going on. He's lucky that he's got some friends that didn't run away when he told them about that. Um, <laughs> And just, just aliens. like, <laughs> that yeah, yeah, it's like, I mean, they're used to weird shit. I realize that, but you know, that's that's pushing boundaries, even for mages. I think. Uh, so, yeah, and he's excited about going to actually try to figure this owl thing out as well. Mm -hmm. We got these, you know, these, I don't know, the big owl man and his spirit minions, I guess I would call them, um, troubling us, and we need to do something about that. Oh, yeah. Well, that brings us into uh, what we've been discussing, what we've been experiencing for the past few weeks. So, last session, we found the three of you meeting up with Khan of the Bridge Trolls at, the Seattle, at a Seattle tent city. Uh, there, you caught up with a... Uh, paralyzed citizen of the streets uh, with Parkinson's disease named Brain. Um, he's had a rough run at life, um, but he's doing fine, and he's passed along a pamphlet that he found, uh, or was given, uh, for an organization calling themselves the Home Guard Solution, spouting a disgusting ideology that certainly lines up with what you've experienced from the Al Shards, uh, the pamphlet has a singular phone number to contact for more information from a gentleman known as Peter. Soon after, you met up with Khan at the makeshift kitchen. Uh, you shared information and pleasantries. Khan had asked Nay to look into um, an individual with the name William Hurt. Uh, he also agreed to help out where he could and to keep the bridge trolls involved. He also reminded you of the importance of building and maintaining a reputation in the city uh, and suggests that you make a name for yourselves soon. You then spent the rest of the day helping out at the tent city, uh, each of you lending a hand with the chili. Uh, Mid-afternoon, uh, you bid farewell to the volunteers and con to kind of recharge your own batteries at the liquid haze. Um, as a side note, one of the... Uh, one of my reflections on last week's episodes and just on this game in general um, is the just the wonderness, wonderfulness of you're not just running your heroes, not because you're fighting some giant dragon and then coming to the city and hanging out in a tavern. You're actually heroes that are involved in the city, um, doing the small things, using your skills uh, where it meets. And that's one of the things I like about this game. So, side note, I love you guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we love you too, Tim. Yeah. In the Liquid Haze, you found yourselves a cozy booth where you started to build a foundation for your cabal. Uh, you started sharing your various experiences and started a uh, info-sharing server. Uh, nay, you de detailed um, some of the streamer disappearances. Um, and it was decided that you would look further into that phone number from the uh, Home Guard Solution and Peter. Uh, Charlie, you've <laughs> detailed your experience with an alien crash site and uh, Men in Black, um, and you handed over this strange device, this kind of tricorder, as best as you could describe it, uh, over to her. Uh, in this discussion, you also... Uh, had the idea of baiting a trap for whatever's causing this, this, these disappearances with the streamers. Um, it's at that point that, nay, you've discovered that uh, one of the uh, mages you've crossed paths with um, has upped her streaming game and is currently running a website called angelday.faith. Um, uh, let's see. <clears throat> and uh, you help to and Jesse, you bring up your uh experiences with Polaris, at least to some uh allusion to it, and that some of your uh 
experiences have become more animistic um, and that played Cindy how the heck are you who the heck are you and who do you play hi I am Cindy uh, pronouns are she her and I play Inea Blackwell, who is a techno shaman with the Kabadi. Um, she is starting to feel like she's getting a group together, you know, to work with that mm -hmm. that she's she's getting comfortable with. Um, but she has a whole lot of worry about that too. She's a guardian and uh, has a lot of people she is trying to take care of on her plate right now she's probably spread herself a little thin but it's starting to look like all of these things that she's been tracking um are coming together in some way so she's hoping that maybe she can take care of it all in one fell swoop because she should be so lucky right <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a big burden you got going on there. Alex, what's up? Well, hello. <laughs> um, okay, I'm Alex. My pronouns are they, them. I play Jezebel Spinner. Jezzy is currently extremely excited to introduce her new friends to her family and to feed them all enchiladas because <laughs> it's been a long time coming and mm. it's it's about time they all sat down and broke bread together, I think. Enchiladas are delicious. Yes, they are. Wait a minute, was that was that Polaris? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Of course. Perfect. Of course. <laughs> and Bill, tell us about SAS and how you collected all of it. That was last week. <laughs> you still have enough SAS to you know, go around. So, anyway, tell us about yourself and keep, uh, who you play. <laughs> I keep my SAS in my pockets. Hey, you know. In my pants pockets. What well, comes in handy in a fight? Um, you know, your pocket SAS. Just throw it in somebody's eye. Right, you pull it out and throw it. At, right, exactly. It's like glitter. Yeah. You can never get it out. Yeah, it'll be everywhere. <laughs> okay. I am Billy. I'm currently using they, them pronouns, but I'm still exploring myself. That's a good way to figure myself out. That's a good, good way to put it. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, I'm playing Charlie Newell. Charlie is a verbena and a mushroom witch. Um, he's got some alien problems going on. He's lucky that he's got some friends that didn't run away when he told them about that. Um, <laughs> and just, just aliens. like, <laughs> that yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, they're used to weird shit. I realize that, but you know, that's, that's pushing boundaries, even for mages, I think. Uh, so yeah. And he's excited about going to actually try to figure this owl thing out as well. Mm -hmm. We got these, you know, these, I don't know, the big owl man and his spirit minions, I guess I would call them, um, troubling us, and we need to do something about that. Oh, yeah. Well, that brings us into uh, what we've been discussing, what we've been experiencing for the past few weeks. So... Last session, we found the three of you meeting up with Khan of the Bridge Trolls at the Seattle at a Seattle tent city. Uh, there, you caught up with a uh, paralyzed citizen of the streets uh, with Parkinson's disease named Brain. Um, he's had a rough run at life, um, but he's doing fine, and he's passed along a pamphlet that he found uh, or was given. Uh, for an organization calling themselves the Home Guard Solution, spouting a disgusting ideology that certainly lines up with what you've experienced from the Owl Shards. Uh, the pamphlet has a singular phone number to contact for more information from a gentleman known as Peter. 
Soon after, you met up with Khan at the makeshift kitchen. Uh, you shared information and pleasantries. Khan had asked Nay to look into um, an individual with the name William Hurt. Uh, he also agreed to help out where he could and to keep the bridge trolls involved. He also reminded you of the importance of building and maintaining a reputation in the city uh, and suggests that you make a name for yourselves soon. You then spent the rest of the day helping out at the tent city, uh, each of you lending a hand with the chili. Uh, Mid-afternoon, uh, you bid farewell to the volunteers and con to kind of recharge your own batteries at the liquid haze. Um, as a side note, one of the... Uh, one of my reflections on last week's episodes and just on this game in general um, is the just the wonderness wonderfulness of you're not just running your heroes not because you're fighting some giant dragon and then coming to the city and hanging out in a tavern you're actually heroes that are involved in the city um, doing the small things using your skills uh, where it meets and that's one of the things i like about this game so side note i love you guys thank you um <laughs> we love you too Tim. Yeah. in the liquid haze you found yourselves a cozy booth where you started to build a foundation for your cabal uh you started sharing your various experiences and started a uh, info sharing server uh nay you did detailed um some of the streamer disappearances um, and it was decided that you would look further into that phone number from the uh, Home Guard Solution and Peter. Uh, Charlie, you <laughs> detailed your experience with an alien crash site and uh, Men in Black, um, and you handed over this strange device, this kind of tricorder, as best as you could describe it, uh, over to her. Uh, in this discussion, you also... Uh, had the idea of baiting a trap for whatever's causing this, this, these disappearances with the streamers. Um, it's at that point that nay, you've discovered that uh, one of the uh, mages you've crossed paths with um, has upped her streaming game and is currently running a website called angel day dot faith. Um, uh, we'll see. Ya. <clears throat> and uh, you help. To, and Jesse, you bring up your uh, experiences with Polaris, at least to some uh, allusion to it, and that some of your uh, experiences have become more animistic, um, and that plays into very strongly with what Nay is capable of. So you kind of started this kind of, I wouldn't necessarily say mentorship, but at least a... Uh, a delving into bigger ideas than what you've been able to experience with the commune. Um, and then after a little bit of debate, you guys decided that you will now be known as the night hunters. And then Jesse was like, well, that deserves celebration and enchiladas. So you invited your friends to dinner. Uh, as you left the liquid haze, Nay sent a crow to Cinder, who is a uh, member of the Bridge Trolls, um, and declaring that you are now the Night Hunters. And you picked up some, some drink for Aunt Mabel and sent yourselves to the commune. And you are now arriving. I'm not sure how you guys wanted to do this. I don't, I mean, y'all may have individual vehicles that you're showing up with, or y'all decided to go together, uh, or like I said, probably maybe a convoy. That's all up to you. I think Nay's been getting around using her own vehicle. I mean, I, don't think... I, can, I can see Jesse using like the farm truck, but. Yeah, I could see I could see her using the farm truck. Yeah, that works. Charlie, how did you get to Seattle? I've still been borrowing a mom's flower van. Okay. 
<laughs> so, for sake of brevity, let's I mean, say that you guys decided to convoy following Jesse. Um, she gave you the GPS address. It's not hard to find, but uh, you guys convoy your way to uh, the Vashon Island Unity Commune. I'll let Jesse take the lead here. We are home. Okay. So you guys can park around the back. Um, just stay next to the farmhouse and don't walk on my aunt's flowers. She'll be really upset. Um, she yeah, I would home. never. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, I think I want to lead everyone first into the farmhouse to introduce them to my aunt and uncle. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to bring you guys in there and right here, this is my aunt and this is my uncle. I work on the farm with them. Um, these are the guys who grew those incredible strawberries that brought us all together. One, one berry at a time. Um, <laughs> to be clear, this is not Aunt Mabel. This is. No, this is this not is your... the Aunt Mabel. Right. This is. This, that's horrible. This is not the aunt. This is just. And ant. And ant. <laughs> You'll find that a lot in this commune, there's a lot of familiar terms like that aunt, cousin, you know, mm-hmm. the likes. Um, everybody's, everybody's family here. Yes. It's like Shoney's. Or Olive Garden. Uh, Olive what? Garden, that's it. When you're here, you're family. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Well, I'm Nay Blackwell. I'm really pleased to meet you. You got a really amazing girl here. Well, we think so too. Thank you very much. And they each shake their hands. Your hands, and you know, are pleasant. Definitely dirt under the fingernails types. You know, there's no. Uh, n- <laughs> the house is clean, but the the people aren't. <laughs> <laughs> the, we just probably caught them on their way in from the fields. I haven't had a chance to get cleaned oh, up yet. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's it's about that kind of it's about that time of day they'd be coming in from the fields. And it's it's November, but this happens to be a uh, surprisingly dry and warm uh, day uh, you've experienced throughout. And uh, yeah, they they they've got a pretty nice uh, setup, and it looks like they're. Uh, all setting up to uh, the outside tables uh, in the center of the commune are all getting set up for the night's uh, dinner. Okay. Um, the next thing I'd like to, well, they've already met Sunny, so I'm going to bring them down to the library um, so that we can meet Aunt Mabel. Because this might be actually helpful. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to introduce you guys to Aunt Mabel. We're at the library. Um, and I walk over to Aunt Mabel. She's like in the stack somewhere. Yeah, and I she's, tap her on the shoulder. Yeah, she's um, been just kind of tending the books, kind of putting away, you know, the few that have been taken out of their shelves. And it's not a large library by any means but it's definitely um something that requires maintenance and so she's just kind of putting things away and she sees you enter and she crawls uh climbs down off the ladder and comes your way and oh hello jezebel (laughs) um so you're sounding incredible as always awesome awesome to hear your beautiful voice (laughs) pleasure and these are your friends yes these these are my new friends this is nay and that's charlie nay (laughs) nice to meet you i'm able (laughs) she goes in for a hug she's she's a hugger uh um and she 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 hugs she doesn't care about personal space that's still total <laughs> shit um it is finally so good to meet you and charlie she goes in for the hug there too 
I was so glad that you decided to come out today. Today is, yes, this is the day that I meet you. Fantastic. Um, well, I'm certainly happy to meet you. Uh, we've heard quite a bit about you from Jesse. Here, I brought this along just for you. <clears throat> and I panned her the bottle of, I believe it was bourbon. <laughs> She accepts the bourbon and she smiles widely. She's like, you shouldn't have, but I will enjoy this. Thank you. <laughs> so, Jesse dear, dinner, yes, enchiladas. I already informed. It's enchilada night. Yeah, I already informed everybody we're going to have enchiladas tonight. Yes, they're going to be delicious. And I brought my friends along to fill their bellies, but also because we might need your help. Of course. There's no reason so, why I would not be meeting them tonight if there wasn't something that you needed. I appreciate that. So, um, yeah, the world's gone crazy. Um, and there's a lot of wild stuff afoot in Seattle. Um, I don't know. There's a lot, guys. Where do you want to start? Should we start with aliens? <laughs> How much um, do you really concerned think about aliens? aliens? <laughs> I mean, tell um, some stories about aliens, well, Jesse. You, you, you would be able to tell me stories about aliens. Of course, you can tell me stories about aliens because you know everything, which is why we're here. <laughs> I don't know everything. I just know what I've been shown. She doesn't know everything; just most things. <laughs> She's like, well, Gandalf. then she sounds like exactly the lady that we need to speak with tonight. Yes. Um, <clears throat> aliens is definitely one thing. Um, I think I'm more concerned about the men in black. Yeah. Uh, and also Big Owl Man. I think those are the two exactly. Big Owl Man? biggest I, I, ones. Yeah. That sounds very interesting. I would like to know more about an owl man yeah we would too that's we were hoping that you might have some research or reference materials we could dig into and get something more about him out of <clears throat> hmm. maybe i'm not sure i haven't come across anything but i haven't read every book here Is there like a reference guide so we can I mean, you're certainly welcome to look or, or we can tell you more about him and that would ring a bell? Possibly. Not my area of expertise, but I can I, I dabble. I'm assuming Owlman may be something from out of this world. Maybe an alien. Don't um, know if I would go so far as an alien. More like Another dimension, maybe. Oh, one of those. Eh, I've got friends that have dealt with that. Friends. <coughs> oh yeah, there's uh, Joseph and his friends. Uh, they're out uh, east of the Seattle area, but they've got a nice little place. Um, they, uh, they hang out in the woods a lot. And this Joseph <laughs> might know more about our big owl man. And we're his friends. He's got a, a group of uh, like-minded urbana and uh, dream speakers out there. Okay, awesome. So that's good to know. Um... Is there any way we could get an introduction? I mean, you want me to come with you? She almost looks excited about the possibility. <laughs> no, no. no. I've got responsibilities here. Aunt Mabel, you're such a tease. Well, I've been accused of worse. <laughs> Okay, so this guy doesn't have like a cell phone, does he? 
I don't believe they have a lot of technology out there. They're yeah, I wouldn't very guess isolated, so. even compared to. I mean, we're living in the middle of the Sean Island. We have cell phones and you know internet and TV. Yeah, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta watch my shows. Can't help it. <laughs> when we set this whole place up, I made sure that we got good reception. I love your priorities. <laughs> Well, back then it was Matt Love, but yes. <laughs> now it's more, uh, well, it's a lot of CBS. Well, oh, a lot of CBS. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> um, okay, so Joseph, Joseph, what, does he have a last name that we should be looking out for? Or is it just Joseph? Last I checked, it was just Joseph. Okay, good to know. So I think at the very least, even if you don't see a lot of a lot more of Nay and Charlie, you're definitely gonna be seeing me in here more. I need to figure out who these people are. So yes, if you're looking for more information of the spirits entities and the like, that's a good place to go. Um at least as far as I'm aware been some time since I've dealt with anything like that. My purview is a little more temporal and mental. Temporal and mental. Hmm. You might be able to help me with something else, too. Hmm. What are you thinking? So, I have a new friend. He, he's a spirit horse called Polaris. And he's kind of like made of the stars. And he's awesome, but he's scary. And I really want us to be friends. I would say he's probably already interested in you, Jesse, if he's shown himself to you. Yeah, but, like, there's a difference between being, like, <clears throat> friends and being, like, besties, you know? Best I can suggest is find out what he likes and get to know him. Hmm. Aunt Mabel, she nods and she's, she thinks she's working with you and she's like, yeah, we can, we can probably... Thus, something out. I don't. I, I don't know a lot about that side of the world, but I, I can. I read some books. Like I said, spirituality is important, but spirits themselves not really where I'm at. Understandable. I mean, as long you know this library like the back of your hand. And I don't fully, not entirely yet, but you might know something that I don't, which would help me figure out what I'm trying to find out. Um, what exactly is it that you're trying to find out? Why he chose me. It couldn't be that you're just amazing? <sighs> well, you're you're like... You're like my mom almost. It makes sense that you would say that. It's like mom privilege. What do you say, Nay? Do you think that it's just because I'm the mother that Desi has found a spirit friend? I gotta ask you this. Do you think it's chance that we ran into each other, the three of us? No. I mean, our strawberries are good, but they're not fateful. That's just straight fate. So spirits don't just show themselves to anybody. And they don't do it by accident. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure I just said to your aunt and uncle... That they've got quite a girl here. Huh. 
That is true. You did say that. Oh, gee whiz. Okay. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe you should start hearing what other people are saying to you. Maybe so. Maybe so. I think you're right. I think y'all are both right. Aunt Mabel is smiling. Yeah, I back that up. Just thinking about this. Mm -hmm. You get the sense that the watching this is for her almost like watching a movie. One that she's seen a few times. Like, Very meaningful. So she gives you she's the you can do whatever you like here kind of speech you know you got the the run of the place um she also reminds you that dinner is not too far along it'll be coming out soon so what would you guys like to do um okay as as pressing as Big Owl Man and missing streamers and men in black are, I want to learn as much as possible about spirits because this is an area that I'm not all that well versed in. Um, and if Nay and Aunt Mabel are to be believed, obviously this isn't an accident. And I was chosen for a reason. So. I'd like to do some research on, I don't know, how to proceed well. Um, so yes, I will be looking for information on spirits. Okay. Specifically, um, spirits, like guiding spirits or... Uh... Uh, in general, like yes. animism, like everything's got a spirit type of thing. Closer to guiding spirits. But I mean, I'll have to read a little bit of the animus stuff. Yeah. It's just not my focus. Of course. Yeah. It could be. It could be an instrument. Move, Baba. Move, baby. Sorry. Okay. Charlie, anything that you're looking into here? Um, yeah, I think my focus is going to be, like, local technocracy and connection to sightings of men in black in the area. <clears throat> Some basic stuff there. Um... So for the duration, uh, as you are uh, working as a cabal, I would say that each of you, uh, and Jesse, you already have this, but the two of you, Charlie and uh, Nay, would gain a single dot in library as the cabal. So you would have access to this library. <clears throat> I mean, Charlie, you've already got some access, but that's mostly contacts and like through the college, and it's not really the same mystic collection that uh, Aunt Mabel has at her disposal. Is that on our sheets? Is this something we should be adding to it, our sheets? It would be under backgrounds. Oh, yeah. That, uh, yeah, you've already got it, Jesse, but uh, the two of you mm -hmm. would have that. And you can add uh, that that library is now part of like your research if you were doing a, you know, it helps out with that. Find the specifics for library for now. Uh, just realize that you have access to it and it will help you in research specifically with uh, more esoteric stuff. Okay. 
So does that seem to be the focus as I look around and kind of familiarize myself? Does that seem to be the focus as esoteric stuff of this library? Or is it more like what one might expect to find in a family-oriented place? So this is a facility that's been around for several decades and um, was built in the 60s. Um, and the collection has come together through that, that time period. Um, so you see a lot of stuff. You see a lot of mundane texts that are about um, free love, uh, hippie stuff, basically. A lot of that. But you also... Um, because there's some homeschooling and other, you see some various textbooks from the ages, um, some weirdly weird old stuff uh, in schools, probably even one of your own school books that you had when you were growing up. You'll probably find something like that here. In the more, it's not a restricted area, it's not Hogwarts or anything, but um, there's definitely a more uh, centralized grouping of uh, texts, and you will find that this would be, you know, uh, books that you might find in a uh, hermetics uh, library, and then some stuff from uh, Asia, with like just you know, going into really different areas of tradition magic, uh, mysticism, a lot of mysticism stuff. Um, and then you also got some conspiracy theory books and a few things that go into uh, Men in Black and UFO sightings and that sort of thing. Um, it, it, it's like I said, it's a very eclectic mix of esoteric things. It's like a one-stop shop. It's... It is a stop. It's not the one stop because there's millions of books that are not here. Sure. Okay, well, I'm going to start pulling books, two stacks, whatever I see that seems like it would have some references to Men in Black. Hmm. And uh, a Native American folktale. Um anything that has to do with that and and native american spiritual beliefs both all right <clears throat> let's see and i'm going to bring the men in black stack back to a table where charlie can have a look see and yeah, it's not necessarily a. Yeah, it's more a collection of like urban legends and folk tales. I mean, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Well, Along these stories with, don't get relayed without reason. Mm -hmm. So a lot of urban legend, UFO sighting stuff. Okay. The dude with the big hair and the aliens show. Yeah. That's probably in a couple of them. Uh, yeah, yeah Giorgio Sukalos. Yes. <laughs> Ancient aliens is a thing. <laughs> that guy's hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. So we'll let you guys listen. So we'll we'll do that as a more over the time sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, Soon comes the time. It's uh, getting late in the, in the day. It's starting the evening is is coming up. Sun is starting to go down, um, and everybody is gathering in the central area where there's uh, five different tables or so, um, each starting to uh, collect people for the for the enchiladas. And there's a uh, sixth table that kind of has the uh, trays set out for you to kind of grab and feed yourself. So, 
the three of you find yourselves at a table uh, sitting with Aunt Mabel, uh, also joining, coming out of uh, one of the houses, um, is Sunny. Um, she's not as made up as she was when you first met her. Uh, her hair is is definitely not as uh, made up. It's it's down. Uh, very minimal makeup. Um, she's wearing a pair of overalls, and uh, she comes over. To, uh, to specifically to uh, Jezebel, and you know, just kind of hangs out and gives you a hug. So, hey, sis, how's it going? Annie, how you been, boo? Well, you know, just kind of hanging out, you know, helping with the farm. How are you? Honestly, bro, I can't even get into it, but I'm not dead, so that's cool. That's great. Come take take a seat. Let's 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 sit down. Yeah. Yes. It's a lot of time. You find yourselves uh at a table. Um again with with the three of you, Mabel, Sunny. Um there's also a couple others um that have joined the table. Uh you learn their names. It's it's Bo, Tom, Jennifer, and Holly. Um they're some of the younger uh, crowd here, but they're uh, in their 20s. None of them seemingly awakened, but uh, you get the sense that they don't it, that, that it's okay to talk about anything with them, because Mabel's there, and Sunny's there. In fact, you would know, Jesse, that they're oh. They're akin to what uh, would be known as consors. They're basically their assistants for for Mabel. Um, they're not awakened, but they are aware of the supernatural and are you know capable of small feats of magic, uh, like a sorcerer would be. But they're not they're not capable of true magic. That makes sense. So he leans forward and kind of looks down the table and says, Hey, Sonny, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm glad to see you're looking a little better today. Huh. Yeah, I... Did I sell you a strawberry? <laughs> Actually, you did. You and you and Jesse both. I remember that. Sorry. It's okay. Gets a little wild out there sometimes. Yeah. And that was a wild night. Well, you know, I. That's saying the least. Right? <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I, I. Yeah. Yeah. There's a. Sometimes it just make, kind of makes you a little wonder, like, what's, what's really out there sometimes. Honey. Maybe you'll remember me if I say I gave you my card. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I've got it around somewhere in my bag. Offers <laughs> open if you need, if you're ever in town and need help. Yeah, that that sounds that sounds great. So, so, um, yeah, tell, tell, tell me more. You were telling, uh, you were telling us earlier that things have gotten wild. Jez, what's, what's going on, Jesse? Ooh, honey. Beyond okay. the, so... what you told me about that night. I don't know. Oh no, it, it's gotten weirder. Okay. So <laughs> there are now men in black involved, potentially. And like Will Smith? Aliens. Uh, yeah, except scarier and not as funny. Um, really not funny at all. At I didn't all, get not that even idea. a little bit. Yeah. Um. So there's men in black involved. There are streamers who are disappearing left, right, and center. Um. We went to a tent city, and there is propaganda. <laughs> Very uh, inflammatory propaganda being spread around the tent cities. Um. And now they're owl people, owl spirit things. 
And that's not even to talk about my dance with spirits of, of late. So, like I said, there's a lot, you know? There's a lot. Well, I'll uh, try to avoid the owl people. Uh, please do, because, geez, they're fucking scary. You're not joking. There's owl people, like, like big eyes and wings. Well, they're more like <laughs> people that are possessed by owl spirits, which is worse because they just look like regular, regular people, and then they try to murder your face. So <laughs> Right, so it, it's hard to tell who they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it, it could be someone possessed and he could just be a regular asshole. So what the hell do we know, you know? True. Yeah, primarily they start out as just assholes and then they just get worse from there. Yeah. That's kind of how the assholes, assholes work, are out I guess. Your pipeline. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else that, I mean, at this particular table, are you guys looking to... Uh, investigate or talk about or move into well if the the others sorry you gave them names i know they have names i don't remember them um bo and tom and somebody and jennifer and holly hey good job there we go good i didn't remember them either Teamwork makes the dream work. As <laughs> your friends, marijuana affects the memory. <laughs> well, oh, Tom, Jennifer, and Holly. So they are assistants to Aunt Mabel, which means that they would know the library relatively, relatively well. Also, yes. And this is probably a stupid question, but there are computers in the library, right? Yes, there's a computer okay, in the library. Okay, so most, most people here will have a computer in their house, but the, the uh, library has a designed library computer. Yes. Okay, good. Um, is it ridiculous for me to try to set them researching? Like, just based on the idea that we're not going to be here yeah. always. Like, but any information that we can gather, even if we're not here would be really helpful. Yeah, they're they're your allies and contacts and they they kind of go along with the library uh, trait here. So you <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Um so while yeah, it's not like if you were in a hermetic lodge, you would have like, you know, personal assistants or anything like that, but they could very easily uh and they recognize this as part of their role in life um, to assist you in these sort of things. Okay. They're not so, slaves or anything like that, but you know, no, they, not at they, all as part of their own spiritual journey and like, you know, finding out more about, you know, the supernatural and the world around them. You're kind of you and Mabel and need to a degree. Sunny are kind of the luminaries in their lives. For that okay so i think i'm gonna ask them um if they wouldn't mind keeping an eye out for have we chosen a streamer yet before i set them on this mission uh i've not heard back from our streamer yet this is like the same afternoon after we talked about it okay have right you, okay. have you reached out to your streamer I think yeah, I that was thought. Done, yeah. yeah, I thought I sent a shot an email off to her. Okay. Yeah. From from the liquid haze. Okay. Right. If that's a, okay. If that's the case, then yeah. I mean, it's still early in the day. I mean, she's probably busy. Um, so yeah. You haven't heard anything back, but you do. Um, did you want to share any information particularly that you know about Lucia? Well, okay. So I told them. At the Liquid Haze about how I'd had to rescue her from an angel um, and how that had been a giant clusterfuck. I don't think I went into any real detail. Right. Um, 
the aftermath of which, and maybe I should go into that now when Jesse brings it up. Um, she wound up in the hospital. Um, I think for a few days. Because she was very unconscious by the time that whole mess got got resolved. So she didn't actually see the full resolution, at least as far as I recall. Right. Um, and while I left her a card and have been keeping tabs on her and kind of touching base with her and stuff, she's kind of not really been listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So for your perspective, Inad, she's almost doubled down on her mm -hmm. um her beliefs. Um and you guys can as you do your research, you find that her stream is very much about reaching out and contacting your guardian angel and doing so uh, through a combination of spiritual meditation and uh, mechanical uh, devices. He has built uh, what she believes is a machine that will talk to her guardian angel. Um, and that night that she met Nay uh, was recorded, streamed, and the whole experiment exploded in her face. From Nay's perspective, there was a uh, spiritual creature there that seemed to take on the characteristics of a uh, of an angel, and not your uh, Michelangelo human with wings, beautiful body angel. We're talking old biblical. Biblical. Uh, with the eyeballs Be and yeah. afraid. Biblically, yeah, yeah. The, Biblically oh, no, accurate angel. This thing wanted the afraid the afraid. They yeah. were like, You better be afraid because I'm about to eat your ass. Yes. And it was It was not great. Yeah. Uh, Nay didn't you know, she got herself hurt a bit too in that that yeah. uh, kerfuffle. Um but uh that for for Lucia has only helped her channel. More people have shown up. She seems to have gotten some additional uh, resources and funding. She seems to have taken on a next level of celebrity uh, from this. And so, despite the weekly, hey, how you doing, both Nay and Lucia just have been too busy to catch up. I don't think Lucia wants to catch up. <laughs> she knows what she's going to get. Cause I kind of lit into her in the hospital. Kind, kind of, kind of hard. <laughs> and that was a few months ago. It was, she scared the hell out of me. And I think herself. And, uh, I probably could have handled it better than I did. But I was pissed. <laughs> but she does seem to fit the bill of a streamer who wants all comers and all voices. And the, the pattern that you've seen um, for people that have gone missing is that the streamer... Uh, has opinions and is in general a very positive person and preaches the idea of inclusivity but being this type of person and having opinions means that at some point there's going to be um a conflict and that's going to lead to bots and bad actors and trolls and some legitimate members of their community uh that don't like parts of whatever nuance you're spouting, or they fail to see the nuance in whatever you're spouting. And so this will lead to the streamer realizing that their followership is declining and they 
reach out to their audience to, you know, hey, apologize or whatever. But at this point, it's too late. And now they look desperate and the spiral continues. And then the streamer will either quit or make a last ditch effort to make a comeback. And in that combat comeback, there is some sort of recorded violent end. And most of these have been written off as a dramatic hoax. And mm -hmm. Lucia seems to fit the bill of somebody who would be at the start of this cycle. The thing about Lucia, I'd like to think that if we frame it as an effort to help her community out, her streamer community out, um, by trying to catch or expose whoever it is that's threatening them into stopping. Um, she might be more interested in trying to help. Um, I don't think she's going to see me as much of a friend exactly. I don't think she hates me necessarily. She's probably not real happy with the memories that I bring up. That said, I still think she might want to help if we frame it that way. Yeah. Holly at the end of the table is like, yeah, I've seen some of her stuff. It's, it's weird. It's out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's... she's not bad at what she does. It's just that what she does isn't terribly safe. And she doesn't take a lot of precautions that she should. I thought she was kind of crazy, but, uh, I won't say you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, she's got some wild ideas about how to reach the other side. I tried a few of them myself, honestly, I, you know, full disclosure. I, I don't think batteries are supposed to work that way. And girl, she had you doing with batteries. Well, there was this kind of thing where you connected a battery to a coat hanger. And this was one of her really early videos. And and she showed that, you know, it produced an image on her on her screen, on her on her on her TV screen that, you know, was a shadowy angel type thing. And, you know, it said hello and stuff. And then the then it was dead and even on her own end, it kind of uh, sparked and died. And hmm. but it was neat. Uh, at least I thought it was. And I don't know. It comes across as a bit hokey. Yeah, it's it's very much giving. Somebody didn't go to science class in sixth grade. I think she slept through science class. Quite frankly, oh. I mean, either that or. She met Casper. I don't know. I feel well, like bad. I feel like you're right, though. I don't think batteries are supposed to work that way. <laughs> it was a whole lot worse than Casper that one night. So I don't know what she's been through or what she's seen. Yeah, she's got. She's not. Yeah, the things that she's gotten involved in that I've seen, and this is months ago. I kind of stopped watching, but. Uh, she got she she got more elaborate with her builds and again I I couldn't follow the science of it but it it was like I said I gave up I just you know it's whatever she's trying to do is you know she's got people that love her I don't get it you think that um she will attract that kind of attention on her own for one. Um, and if so, like, that's what, like, what I'm thinking is, that, you know, if she's not going to be cooperative with us, then she may still be, it still may be worth tracking, you know, what she's doing anyway. And just, you know, basically, you know, say if she doesn't want to be, be the bait. She's going to end up being the bait anyway. That's it. And so we should keep an eye on her. Honestly, 
it's a good thought because it's possible. She's a little bit um, unicorns farting rainbows and fluffy bunnies, so maybe. That sounds like the kind of people that they are, you know, out to get, or at least to stop they, they their do messages seem, from spreading. Yeah, they do seem to be targeting the hopeful idealists. And she certainly falls under that category. So she's probably worth watching, even if she doesn't want to cooperate with us specifically. Even if she won't cooperate with us, there's nothing saying that she won't cooperate with Holly. If if the others come to her as like fans who are just interested then even if she won't cooperate with us, we might still have an in. Hmm. Uh, Yeah, I was just about to add, Nate, do you think that that is a better option than you going directly, or do you think that there's a chance that she would be more cooperative, you know, because she knows you and the situation or is that a bad thing i mean honestly we could do all three i think i'd like to the... i think i'd like to approach her first jesse i i and, and charlie i i i don't like the idea of sneaking around behind her back yeah, but sure. i also don't like the idea of leaving her exposed even if she's been warned because she frankly doesn't listen So I think if she pushes back, then yeah, maybe we call that plan B. We can do that. We can do that. And either way, we can keep watching just in case. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think that the direct route is probably, uh, it's definitely, it feels like the more moral route to go. Yeah, um, I agree. To me, but I like, I said, I don't know her in the situation and you do. Yeah. So I wanted to give us a back door if we had to. Yeah. Uh, it's a reasonable I'm... thought. Holly s- says, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll I mean, I'll follow her again and uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye on her as best I can. We'll see uh, what we can do. I'd I'll, really yeah. appreciate I'll, it. I'll keep you informed. Hey, no, no yeah. anything for Jesse. Aww, yeah. Aren't you sweet? See, what would I tell you about quite a girl? (laughs) I'm going to keep saying it till you believe it, Jesse. That's the way it's going to be. Ooh, honey, y'all trying to give me the vapors on this phone. (laughs) Gracious. So you guys have played it out and you've had a uh, delicious uh, amount of enchiladas, probably more than one. Like you had one tray of green sauce, one tray of red sauce. Um... And you've had your discussion, at least in terms of this, and, and and Mabel, for the most part, just kind of watches and nods and lets you have that conversation. And Are we still the movie she's seen a few times? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um, Probably. So, and then meal kind of comes in and everybody starts kind of cleaning up the, the, all the various tables are you know, having their conversations and uh, like I said, the weather's pretty nice. It's in the, in, you know, 50 degree area, even as the sun's going down right now. So it's not super cold. Um, and it was a clear sky for the day. And yes, I did check the weather forecast for this particular day in the past um, <laughs> because I'm a weirdo and makes that sort of decisions. What day is this? Oh, it was a clear sunny day. Um <laughs> We won't even go into the research I was up to my eyebrows in today, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Now, um, so you, you guys, the evening is kind of coming to a close. Did you guys, what was the what was the plan for the rest of the evening uh, before we split off? Okay, so, um, I think... Two things. 
I think Nay wants to talk to Mabel again. Um, I'm trying to decide if each second thing is the thing that needs to happen right this minute. Oh. I mean, what time of day are we looking at here at this point? Um, it's, it's in the evening. It's uh, probably probably looking at like six, seven ish. So it's a relatively early evening. Yeah, well, but, the sun starts going down. Yeah, but, but these folks are farmers too, so they're early to bed, early to rise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they also um, have a nice bonfire every once in a while, but not tonight. <laughs> true. Oh. And that is the end of section one. We are going to go into a nice intermission here uh, so that you can take a little break, go to the bathroom, get some snacks, that sort of thing. It's all good. Um, We'll come back here and we'll continue with the uh, with episode 11 of Seattle at Dawn. Stay tuned.
Okay. Well, I'm a, a Nay is going to look for an opportunity to catch Mabel just kind of in between things where she's kind of off by herself, fish. Okay. All right, so you're going to kind of track down corner Mabel in the evening. Yeah. Also, they will help with the cleanup if they'll let her. <laughs> no, they'll let you. You know, they're mm -hmm. you know, they're not uh, they're not big on ceremony or anything like that. If you're mm -mm. If you're there, you're a pair of hands. You can help. Yeah, I figured, but some people get a little weird about letting guests help clean up. <laughs> they do. They do. These folks are not those people. It's actually kind of nice and refreshing. Anything, uh, Charlie, anything you wanted to do while you were here on the mm -hmm. commune? I think the only thing that Charlie wanted to do was dig into that, uh, the research pile. Okay. And Jesse, anything you wanted to do for the evening before it wraps up? Um, so honestly, after the conversations that I've had today I'm kind of interested in getting some time on my own um I don't want to like kick them off the farm because they're very welcome to stay however long they'd like um but I'm going to say good night today and Charlie mm -hmm. okay and I would like to go to Snake Tongue Point okay that sounds fun it's gonna be awesome <clears throat> okay. Apologize for checking. Sorry. Not quite yet. Okay. But all right. So for Anea, you were looking to talk to Mabel. So it's not hard. Um, she's got her little house off to the side next to the library. Um, she tends to, uh, sit on the porch, uh, in the evenings after dinner. Okay. She's I'll got, approach she's, her. She's, she's got herself a, a small pipe, uh, that she smokes. <laughs> she enjoys it much like Abraham Lincoln. All right. Uh, uh Nay will approach um respectfully. She is already tending to treat Mabel the way she'd treat an elder. Um so with the approach and staying on you know basically bottom of the porch steps. Mm -hmm. Um Uh, Miss Mabel, I uh, wonder if I could have a word. Absolutely, child. Come on up. She offers you her pipe. Uh, Anything for you? Thank you. Just a quick, respectful. <laughs> I don't really want this, but she offered. It's a tobacco pipe, so yeah, it's not... <laughs> Old habit. Okay, so a couple of puffs and then offer it back. Okay. Good to, good to see you here. Been uh, expecting you. Okay, right to it. That was the feeling I got. I wondered if you could tell me the how that came to be. Drags on on the pipe. Kind of closes her eyes a bit and pulls out some smoke as it kind of fills the air around her. And she looks back at you. I see four. 
I always have. Four. And this is giving me a sense for time. I mean, now seems about the right time for you to arrive. And so you have. Will you tell me that there's a time when Big Owlman doesn't threaten Seattle anymore? I see a time... Where it is important for you and Jezebel is to decide the fate of Seattle. Whether that includes this owl man, I cannot see. Some things are still too much in flux for such visions. You see moments of importance. Their outcomes difficult to say. <laughs> I'm sounding like Yoda. This is insane. <laughs> Have you, you seen know, those some... movies? Oh, yes. It's you know, great. somehow it was comforting. <laughs> Thank you. You can't take everything too seriously. There are times where you must. But this is not one of them. You're probably aware people tell me I take things too seriously. As I said, I see four. Would it be all right if I used your library for another hour or so before I take off? Everything in there is free to inspect. Is there wireless available inside? Yeah. And is it all right if I connect to that? Sure. Thank you. I mean, I've got John working on uh, getting us a better connection out here. We're still running on 4G, but uh, we'll get up to 5G soon. Well, okay. I'm sure I can make it work. Yeah. I think 4G is plenty fast, but, you know, some of the kids here, they're uh, complaining about the latency. I can understand them. Um, your friend, Joseph, was it Joseph? Yes. He, he's kind of our IT guy around here. Uh, the one that you were oh, directing us to. The other one. Joseph. Sorry. Uh, yes, what about him? I'd like to try to contact him in the next few days, if it's possible. Is it possible to get a hold of him that soon? I can reach him. I will make him aware that I gave you his address. That way they don't shoot you in on arrival. I definitely prefer to remain unshot. That's that's would that's much more comfortable. They're a little touchy against those sires, so yes. I'll let them know. Thank you. Of course. And thank you for your hospitality tonight. 
Anybody? A anything for Jesse? She's very important to us. She's good. There are things that I cannot tell her. Things that I've seen since she was a child. I've done my best not to interfere because that can be a problem. But I've also done my best to steer her in the right directions. Push her out of the nest when necessary. Sometimes when... leaving the nest is the scariest part of a chick's life. Yes. I'm glad she's been able to find someone like you and Charlie. Well, here, let me give you, and I pull one of my cards out. I'm starting to have to carry stacks of them um, and offer it to her. Please feel free to contact me if you or Jesse or anyone here needs help. I'm happy to help. She nods at that, and she takes the card, and she she puts it in her little pouch. And nay. Kind of gets back to her feet, and... Um, again, I want to thank you for your hospitality tonight, and it was great to meet everyone. Um, I'll get out of your hair so you can have your evening and I'm going to go check out the library one more time before we take off tonight. You're welcome to it. Thank you. And have a good day. You too. And Nay will head for the library. Actually, she's got to go to her car to pick up her laptop first and then go back to the library. All right. That sounds good. And you too, Charlie, you were doing some research here. Yeah, I'm sp like specifically looking through the Urban Legends okay. stuff for instances that were similar to mine. Okay. And connections in it, hopefully connections to um, between those sightings and technocracy. Yeah. So you were looking into like you know the urban legends, the 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 men in black, and the in alien like incursions or whatever UFOs, um, and of course trying to tie that to kind of the bigger picture. Yeah, this is going to be like research and I'd say intelligence or wits, either one. Same same difference, I suppose. Um, yeah. Um, for the material that you have here, uh, trying to find anything useful, um, we'll say difficulty seven, because uh, this is a little bit into that weird space. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, did you want me to build the button or are you building the button? You're building the button. Got I'm it. I'm building it right now. Yeah. Build the button. I like that idea. Build the button. Okay. I'm going to find it. There we go. And we're going to rename that UFO research. Oh, I haven't typed in a while. <laughs> Difficulty seven. Yes. Did I do that twice or something? 
think I did. Cancel. Okay. One success, I believe. Yep. Okay. Um, with one success, um, you do start to gather information about um, the men in black and how there has been historically, and you've seen the movies, you've seen some of the tropes, but you dive into it a bit more. And the reports come back that oftentimes when a individual comes across a uh, UFO sighting or a crash site or some sort of uh, spacing like that, the quote unquote men in black will arrive and they from a distance always seem to be fit human uh, body with dark sunglasses and a black suit, black tie. But you come across even stranger accounts where those that arrive don't necessarily have human, full human interactions. They come across as They don't have very great social graces. They don't seem to know how to interact with the people around them. Um, you also find that they will uh, have very almost plastic lake -like looking skin, and very rarely do they ever have, or actually never do they have hair. Usually, they're described as like not having eyebrows, not having a beard, not having hair on their head. Um, and then you come across one story where the men in black or a man, a man in black gets shot and instead of leaving a body, it, uh, disintegrated. Wow. So, really spooky stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the hell are these things? You also find that the frequency of men in black type stories seems to kind of run out. Like, after 2000, it seemed more rare to see anything kind of like And it was more prevalent in the 50s and then the 60s and 70s and 80s. And then, like, it slowly started. The, either the descriptions of the men in black stopped or there and there was just or there was just less of those UFO type experiences. Most of the research you find is just from older books and newer books don't mention it as much. Yeah, uh, I feel like it may be time to take that search from the, you know, their papers and do a little bit more internet type research, but I don't necessarily need to do that here. Okay. Anything else you were looking into or wanted to, I mean, this is just one night, so obviously you can't do everything. Right. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if it would, if there's, oh, you know, the other thing that I'm concerned about is like, you know, because I had this encounter, does it seem like they come back or that they, you know, are there any, um, incidents of repeat sightings or, or them, you know, the per, you know, someone that interacted with them being followed or anything like that yeah from what you're researching it usually most reports all end with um 
this is kind of the same idea that the men in black showed up and then they were gone. Like usually either the person woke up or found themselves at home away from the, the uh, actual occurrence with no real memory of what happened. Um, other than these strange uh, individuals, those things kind of pop out, but like a lot of them seem to, uh, they don't have many repeat occurrences with the same person. Usually it's, they're all kind of one off. Um, you do see that there was one string of a guy who uh, just happened to live uh, out in Nevada and reports multiple uh, occurrences. Um, but he also seemed to have like uh, other wild stories that didn't quite match with reality. And he, he seemed to be more tinfoil hat than accurate. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there's bound to be those. That's part of the whole of the difficulty of this is sussing out what is real and what is hoax. Yeah. And with one success. Yeah. Some of it's kind of like, well, right. maybe. It, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what else is on your mind there, Charlie? Are you? You good. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, well, yeah, I might as well hop online real quick and see if I can find any more modern uh, sightings. Okay. See if, like, like very recently. All right, so usually what you've learned and kind of... Uh cross-referencing that with the the power of the internet um it's the this is still research um, yeah it's still re yeah still intelligence and research um but your earlier your earlier work will make the internet search a little easier it'll be more of a difficulty six um but you're also running into a world where there's way more information, but it's really hard to filter. Yeah. Three successes. Woo. Three successes. You find a rabbit hole of conspiracy theories and men in black and UFOs and uh, little gray men, little green men, big rocky giants and and Bigfoot. Um, and this, this hole just you find so much information that seems to, you know, the further down you go, all of a sudden it's starting to make sense. Um, of course, JFK, you know, knew about aliens. Um, but then you kind of put the brakes on and you realize there's some, there's, there's some insanity that kind of goes along with this. Uh, it's almost as if by design, anything that relates to men in black and uh, gray aliens and, and that sort of thing feels like it's intentionally obfuscated with in like insane connections um, make it easier to dismiss and with your three successes you kind of realize like oh my gosh this is this isn't like the the word of a bunch of crazy people um, and there is a bunch of crazy stuff that you find, but you also start seeing the pattern that keeps it so that it's easy to dismiss. Like I said, um, 
you're almost starting to find uh, that pattern that could lead you to the the truth without the baggage of um, you know Bigfoot. <laughs> um, who knows? B- B- Bigfoot might be real, but he's he's definitely not hanging out with the men in black. Um, so, well, I haven't seen him yet. Not yet. I mean, I spent a lot of time in the woods. Yeah, sure. I still haven't seen him yet. <laughs> well, it's because you don't have a blurry camera. Um, that's true. Well, Bigfoot is naturally blurry. Well, okay, I guess that's true. But you need <laughs> that's a why camera. it's hard to photograph. But you it's like how vampires don't have reflections. Bigfoot just automatically blurs in film, like <laughs> yeah, in image yeah. capture of any kind. <laughs> That makes so much sense now. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So. uh, You find. The Internet's a big, big bucket, but you do find that. There's one particular forum that seems to be speaking the right language, seems to be collecting information from various sources, and they're trying to put together a case for a international New World um, Order-style Illuminati controls everything sort of thing. Um, But they've got some compelling evidence. You see a couple, uh, you even see some video footage of, you know, men in black from a distance, but you do see it and it, you, it, it's immediately eerie, immediately recognizable. You remember, you see, you've seen that. (laughs) That was what you saw. So, there's there's people out there that are having these same experiences as you did, and they are pointing out in or similar experiences, I should say. Um, even a couple uh, in Washington State, but there's other places that have little hot spots of uh, quote unquote alien activity. I would definitely want to narrow my search as locally as possible. Okay. So you'll, you'll, you'll spend some time looking at that. Um, this is kind of as far as you could go for this particular evening, but yeah, you've, you've got some solid strands that you can, you know, kind of start pulling at. Wait. Uh, nay, you were also here in the library working besides Charlie. Yes, Nay decided she wanted to borrow a new internet connection that is spotty and also do some relaying so that she can find out uh, what she can find out about the phone number and the name from the propaganda brochure. Okay, so yeah, you're looking into the Home Guard um, solution. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, simple enough. You've got some good starting information. Um, this could be research, but you're using uh, this could be more investigation in your case. Yeah. Um, because it's not necessarily research into older or, you know, stories. This is more like investigating an organization and its members and things like that. So I think that is more investigation and intelligence or wits, either one. Uh, they are the same for me. Yeah. So I. Am I constructing this button or yeah. are you? 
you make the button. Okay, I'll make the button. That means I have to pick a button, doesn't it? Okay. Well, there's five of them. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go with wits and uh, where did investigation go? Oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> Do your own research. I am punching buttons and nothing is happening. So that tells me that it's happening behind the character sheet. There it is. Yep. Behind the character sheet. I have punched all of the buttons and now I have all of the windows. <laughs> okay. Roll 20. Do better. No, they're doing fine. <laughs> okay. And no DP mod. Yeah, difficulty. This is not really real hidden information. So, yeah, six. Okay. Yay! Four successes. Four successes. These guys are not hiding. Um, you find some decent information about these guys. Home guard solution. Uh, definitely pushing a. Uh, xenophobic ideology mostly made up of white men but uh, there does seem to be some women that join even some uh, black and ironically Latino men are members of this group um, but typically it seems to be uh, those that have been here for several generations or uh, the like um, this brotherhood as far as you can tell, extends to all the men in the group, and it kind of gives them a uh, a shield, saying that they can deny their racist reputation, because you know everybody has a black friend, right? Um, Gak. Yeah. Um, sorry, I pulled from the bottom of the barrel on this one. Um, pulled? You scraped. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's a lot of scraping. I may have just killed Alex. <laughs> Based on what you what you can find, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of religious or or um, mystic connections. They don't seem to be um, heavily involved in anything beyond the, kind of the standard, uh, you know, kind of Christian thing. But again, it's not something they focus on. Um, there's no a Staru faith or anything like that. Um, you do find in your rabbit hole search that there is a couple of disturbing um, uh, connections to white supremacy and some of that. Um, it makes you kind of think uh, about Griffin Claw a little bit, going, I mean, it doesn't seem like that's the thing going on there, but. <laughs> But you can kind of make that connection that they seem to have had some, at least connection to that, not necessarily the white supremacist side, but the spiritual side of uh, old Viking Astaru faith. Um, and then you kind of circle back around to the group and you're like, okay. Uh, and you find that they tend to, uh, they have a watering hole. They kind of have a organization that was created by three brothers. Um, and that this, um, they kind of have a bar that they meet and they usually just seem to bitch about life a lot there. Um, but they do from time to time get organized in protests and they've marched against the liberal governments of, of several different West coast cities. Um, they tend to organize around more like counter protesters they look for they they look for some other liberal group and then try to antagonize they never have their own 
they never tend to have their own march. Um, the three brothers um, happen to be uh, Ket, Ned, and Peter, a.k.a. Pip Calhoun. And from the research, you can see uh, Chet um, is kind of the older... Uh, brother, he's the more charismatic of the, you know, he can work a crowd. You see uh, him with a bullhorn quite a bit, usually on stage in some of the footage and photos that you find. Um, seems to be the more comfortable speaking with media and having his ideas be a little more nuanced and less on their face offensive. Um, this is Chet. This is Chet. Yeah. Okay. Um, Pip. Seems to kind of be the um, the more friendly, outgoing type. He has organizational skills. He seems to be the one that would like that put together their website and made these pamphlets. And then Ned, um, uh, you don't get a whole lot of information on Ned other than you know he uh, is almost always there, um, and then. Uh, especially in the uh, the news reports, this is this is a lot of information because you got a four. Um, <laughs> yeah, I am see, not complaining. I needed a good roll. <laughs> yeah. No, you got one, um, and you didn't need Bill to do it. Um, I didn't need to ask Bill to do it. <laughs> uh, That's Ned, a first. That seems to be present at some of their more uh, violent uh, gatherings. Like when things go bad, he's usually there. Okay. All right. If you had rolled like two successes, you would have gotten half of that. You got even a little extra because, you know, the internet's big. Yes. Always at most. Um, gathering. So I am getting some ideas here. What is the name of their favorite bar? That's a good question. Damn it. My finger. I don't have a name for it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's well, the one thing I forgot I'm to put in the notes. I think uh, I was like, "God damn it!" What is the name of their bar? Um, we'll pretend I'm still looking, and you can throw one at I'll me later. Find a, I'll find a good name here. It'll be in your in your notes. Okay. But yeah, you you easily found that. Okay. The prancing pony. No. Just kidding. <laughs> That would so <laughs> match up either that or the cantina. Most icy cantina. I have killed Alex again. Let's have the Muppet music play in the background. Not the, not the cantina music. The Muppet theme song. They're close enough that you might not notice it until it's too late. Go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, there, Nay. You've got a pretty deep dive there on this home guard group. You have their phone number. You have a little bit of information about the people who uh, run this thing. Okay, so like. that gives me the people who run it, but tell me about William Hurt. William Hurt. Because that was the name that we got attached to this whole mess to start with. Yes, so... 
William Hurt. That's going to be its own investigation there. Oh. That's a separate track of, of thought. Okay. Uh, you got a name. Let's see if you can connect the dot, maybe. There may not be any dots. <clears throat> could be Pac-Man. You could be near the end of the game. Running from ghost to ghost. <laughs> okay, same um, parameters? Yeah. Um, difficulty on this one's a little higher, though. It's going to be seven. Okay. The home guard's not high. Oh, I've got one. one I don't. Okay. Yeah, one success. So, um, looking into William Hurt, um, you find that he is um, successful businessman in Seattle seems to <clears throat> built up his um, small fortune um, not really super rich but just well off um, with a uh, he's not really like a tech mogul or anything like that but he's kind of made a niche for himself as a uh, as a outdoor um, meets tech like he he will make the uh, solar cells for batteries um, uh oh we lost Jesse we lost Jesse oh we got Jesse back um maybe <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, he's kind of done a good job of fusing uh, the Pacific Northwest love of um, hiking and outdoor camping uh, with its love of technology um, and making easier use of like, you know, that sort of technology out in the woods. So, so does he program it, manufacture it, or just sell it? Manufacturer. He's, okay. he's he seems to be the guy that got the not necessarily the big ideas, but he's he knows how to make the the chocolate and the peanut butter mix, so to speak. Okay. And he's kind of built that stuff. So he's got a few distribution warehouses and the like that will sell to you know the REIs and exporting goods of of the world. Okay. Well, that's this, uh, you know, that's as much as you can really find about him uh, with that one success. But he is local to Seattle and he does seem to uh, occasionally get out of his office. And he has the connection to this Home Guard group. Um, you don't see anything specifically there. That just seems to be a name that uh, was on. Uh, Khan's mind. You know, he heard the name a couple times, but and it, it's nothing that you see in your search connects the two. Okay. So Khan had it in his head that this guy was connected to them somehow, but I haven't figured out how. He's yeah. He's heard the name on the street a couple. Lost mm. again. Yes, Discord is like rearranging the world. Yeah, because changes my windows all the time, all over the place. I'm gonna go back to that just to do this. All of a sudden, we're staring at Bill's face instead of Cindy's. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Anaya. <laughs> my Your hair is different. Very, very different. There's, hmm. 
I was going to say more of it, but it maybe not necessarily. Maybe it's about the same amount, just in different places. Either way. <laughs> so, uh, sounds like you did some decent research here. There's more, more to possibly do over the time. Um, mm -hmm. But it is getting late on, on the island. Yeah, I didn't want to hang out too terribly long because um, it's getting late and I got to catch a ferry to get back to the mainland and, and, and. So it's time to go. Yeah, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. But I think this is a good time to take a break while we figure out what's uh, happening with Jesse Bell. And, uh, <laughs> yes, Alex. please, because what the cheese, what the hell is going on with my computer? I'm about to commit crimes.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed your break. Uh, now you get to uh, play around a little more with uh, the Night Hunters. Um, yeah, Night Hunters. Uh, at first, it took, uh, took some getting used to the name, uh, but we're getting there. Um, so yeah, if you're in chat or uh, anything like that, come find me. I'll be there. Um, at least in this episode. If you're watching this in the future, then uh, that doesn't make any sense. So, here we go. Continuation. Uh, this is a, probably about another 35 minutes or so, and then the episode will be done. You can continue on with your life, uh, get some dinner, you know, maybe put on a, a, good, a good show or something, you know, you know, other than this one. <laughs> oh, boy. I am terrible at this. Moving on. We're back. And at this time, it seems that uh, both Anaya and Charlie have driven back to their their homes. Um, I don't suspect there's any difficulty. It's a Sunday, but uh, Jezebel, you, yeah. you had some uh, some things that you wanted to do. Um, I this, did th this particular evening. I did have some things I wanted to do. So I think what Nay said first was finding what Polaris likes really stuck with me. Okay. So I think I'm going to go to my house first and sort of like raid our storeroom. I'm looking for like produce, whatever I think a horse would like. So oh. like apples and carrots and wheat and stuff. And then I'm also grabbing some, we should have a little bit of bourbon in the house. My aunt doesn't drink, but my uncle does. Yeah. So I'm going to take like a little bit of his whiskey and yeah. some of Aunt Mabel's tobacco. She leaves some here too. Of course. She's got, um, she's got stashes <laughs> everywhere. Stashes <laughs> everywhere for Aunt Mabel. So I'm going to grab all of that kind of stuff and put it in my like my bag or whatever. Right. And then I think I'd like to go hiking up to Snake Tongue Point because I need quiet and privacy for what I'm trying to get done. Right. Okay. Easy enough. Um, so you make your way up to the point. Um, you seem to be the rare person willing to go this far. Uh, most people mm -hmm. don't take the trail. And it, it takes a while. It's 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 it, it is a hike. Um, pretty dangerous to do at night as well. But uh, you've done it before. You've uh, you survived. Find your way up there. What um, what's your uh, what's your goals? What are you looking to do? So my plan once I get up there. I think I'd like to put each of the things that I brought as an offering. So I have my little carrot, my little apple, a little cup of barley, some tobacco and whiskey and such. And I'm just going to put them all in a line in front of the space that I want to meditate. Okay. And then I would like to sit at Snake Tongue Point and call specifically for polaris like i'm trying to get into a meditative state specifically to reach out to polaris okay yeah for something like this i mean you can do a uh a wits and meditation Type of scenario, uh, just kind of put yourself into the ritualistic space and kind of get that ritual going. Larry's ritual. And you said wits and what now? Uh, and meditation. Wits and meditation. There we go. Let 
Wait a minute. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, in the description, it's whatever. Um, no DP mod, and the difficulty is six, right? Um, let's see. This is yeah, just for the meditation part of it. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh, three successes. Three successes. So. Very easily, you you focus on your connection to this place. You focus on your growing connection beyond, and you focus in on Polaris and their uh, connection with you. And with the three successes, that makes this a more uh, simple. Casting. So yeah, uh, you can roll your um, irritate plus prime. So roll. So if you hit the irritate button, uh, the DP mod would be two. Uh, so that'll give you the correct amount of dice. Um, okay. Difficulty and... um, with the meditation brings it down to three. It's a very simple connection. Okay. Four successes. Four successes. Takes a little time, but not much. As uh, as the sun has set and the um, waxing gibbous moon rises, um, the stars come more into focus, and you kind of fall back into yourself and your your vision kind of glazes over as the night sky shifts and changes as the form of of your guiding spirit Polaris is textured with the night sky and you see them galloping and it's unusual because at first they start off gigantic and huge and then they're galloping towards you so you would at first expect it to be getting larger as it comes at you but it, instead it becomes more becomes smaller as it's galloping towards you and becomes kind of the the normal size you expect as it is both there and not there before your offerings. So, um, hi, Polaris. Um, I brought stuff and things. Um, do you like any of this stuff by chance? The, 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 the form of the horse seems to nod a bit and walks towards the offerings and kind of surveys them and sniffs at each of them. Go ahead and like make a make a uh, wits and Cosmology. In cosmology. And you make that a difficulty six as well.
And no DP mod, right? No. Good. There we go. One success. One success. Okay. The the horse is physically there in in some regard, and it picks up the apple. It starts to you know kind of eat that. And while it does so, you feel that connection, however intangible as as it is but you feel kind of this warmth of acceptance okay good so you like apples that's good to know um i'll keep apples nearby <laughs> um i actually had a couple of questions for you if that's okay it, um it gives a bit of a nod and looks at you with, with uh, intent. So I was made privy to some things that are a bit disturbing. Um, I'm sure you know, maybe. Um, but I wanted to see if you know anything about a big owl man. Does any of, does that sound familiar at all? Or owl spirits or owl whatever they're called? Owl bad guys, bad owls. Um, Polaris seems to think about that for a moment. And then kind of shakes its head. You get the sense that this is not something not something that they're typically concerned with. You almost you 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 the connection that you're that you have you almost feel like such a thing is beneath them to know. Like it's beneath not that's not their sphere of of influence. Okay, okay. If it's not your sphere, if it's beneath you to know, do you know who might know something about Big Owl Man? Because, I mean, you don't have to know, but if you know someone who knows someone. And Polaris kind of steps back. If you get the sense that whatever spiritual energy, whatever hierarchy there is with spirits, I mean, Polaris Hello. barely knows what an owl is, <laughs> as far as you consider it. Fair. Um, with your cosmology role, you would you get the sense that Polaris, while taking this form of a horse, is not the same as being a, a horse spirit. Um, it is more like a incarnate it's more it's closer to what you would consider like a angel or celestial or something along those lines it's not it's not part of the same spirit 
hierarchy that say uh, what you've heard from Anea with her um, experiences? Oh, now I'm thinking. If the owl spirits are outside of the fear that Polaris is in, if Polaris is more, we'll just say on a different plane. So in your study of cosmology, there is the low umbra, the mid umbra, and the high umbra. And okay. And Polaris would definitely be more attuned with the different uh, high umbra planes, like the astral plane and um, and those sort of like the ideas of heaven, that sort of thing. Whereas like animal spirits, like the owl shards and their types, tend to be more like the mid umbra. The that's more um, reflection of the material world. actually helpful yeah not all That's spirits know each other sadly <laughs> no that makes sense that does make sense um so that's actually very helpful um my next sort of question mm -hmm. is well okay he is a Spirit. Maybe he, I don't know. This is a hell of a long shot, but I have to ask, right? Yeah, of course. So he's he's a high umbra spirit that's not a horse, but is a horse, but not a horse. Is it possible then that maybe he knows anything about these men in black? This sounds ridiculous, but I mean, mm -hmm. he's a spirit. Maybe they're not human. Who knows? Um, yeah, and with with the with that last question, Polaris just kind of sags a little and just. You almost feel like the apology, like, I, you know. Like, no, no apology, please. Like, you just can't. You, you get in your sense that you know, like, he's used to big cosmological things. Yeah, know? not small ones. Yeah, and the, and and just the idea of men in black is like he doesn't even understand the concept. Less so than mm. like owls. That makes sense. I just had to check. I mean, because if, if they were spirit, it would have been good to know. But they're not spirit, which is, at the very least, we can cross that off the list. So that's good. I think my last question for Polaris is how I can best help Nay and Charlie with their respective missions because there's a lot there and it's really really big and more than likely really really dangerous so i'd love to be the best asset possible for my new friends okay with that idea polaris approaches you and rubs against you with the, with his muzzle and you 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 you've got that same warmth and that feeling of acceptance that you have what you need you are the asset oh why is everyone trying to make me cry tonight oh my god Everyone's so sweet. Well, I guess that's helpful too. <laughs> Thank you, Polaris. <laughs> oh, did I bring another apple by chance? I'd love to give him another one. 
I mean, there's you probably do. I'm gonna give him another apple, just because he's been so helpful tonight. I think yeah, been that's a good been boy. good boy. <laughs> No, he's been a good giant cosmological spirit being. <laughs> yes. Been a good friend and guide. Yes. Yes. He's definitely been that. And I think I'm going to stay up at Snake Tongue Point tonight. Of course. Just meditate a little. Of course. Try and steal myself for what's coming. It's a very pleasant night it's not too cold you didn't need to bring too many things to keep safe and warm and you 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 even if like 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 polaris runs back into you know the cosmos and the presence is never missing it's always kind of there you 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 don't even need to be here at stage point you could be you feel like you could go anywhere and still this this connection is there. That's good to know. <laughs> so once all three of you kind of get back to your domains as they are, um, a couple days go by, you guys each are in your own research space you're all doing what you can um uh, each of you receive text from con big daddy con big daddy con and he states that, you know, the text pretty much basically goes, found one of your missing streamers. His name's Joe Lee. Uh, we're keeping tabs on him. Like the name. Pardon? Big Daddy Khan focusing on the right details as usual. Well, the trolls, they, you know, like I said, this is a couple days later, but yes. Hmm. So, Joe Lee, I immediately want to text Nay. I'm just going to text the whole Yeah, we should just, like, Yo. yeah, just going to say, <laughs> we need to get in the chat and be like, we need to get on this immediately and get information like ASAP, from Joe Lee. Yes. So. The music started, and I immediately started to lunge for my mouse to find out what tab was making noise. What happened? <laughs> Why is there noise? There should not be noise. <laughs> so, I'm going to say at this point, you got some information. You got. The location for where the home guards uh, solution likes to meet. You've got a phone number to call if you want to join in on their meetings. You've got or send them pizzas. Sending them pizza. Or send them pizza. Because, <laughs> yeah, but like with, with disgusting toppings. <laughs> oh yeah. You put some banana on there. Right. <laughs> right. Something a ninja turtle would eat. B bananas and sardines. <laughs> Yes, yes. I with white sauce. At some point I saw a listing of every pizza ordered by the turtles in the original series in order. And it just got more and more bizarre. Dude, Turtles fans <laughs> got nothing better to do, I swear. Yeah, of course you did, Tim. Of course you did. <laughs> I didn't mean to, that wasn't what I was, I didn't even, it wasn't what even I, what I was looking up, but like I said, the internet, <laughs> you find lots of things adjacent to what you're searching. 
I, I, absolutely. The internet occasionally pukes things on your shoes that you were not even in the ballpark looking for. That's like 99% of the time. And don't be in a rabbit hole on Reddit. Boy, howdy. Oh, boy. No oh. You will end up in places, okay? <laughs> Something tells me Alex has recently seen some shit. <laughs> Look, I've been places on the internet that I wish I could unsee, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the brain bleach? <laughs> like, please. <laughs> so, you got a you got a location there. Um, you have people that you can follow up with on the alien thing, um, as well as um, you do get a response from. Lucia um saying you know what was your what was your email uh, specifically uh, hey Lucia how have you been doing I ran into a situation uh, with some streamers that seemed to be disappearing Wondered if you'd be open to helping my investigation into that. Let me know. Yeah. Um, she replies. It's like, hey, Ned. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I can do to help with disappearing people, but. You know, hey, I, 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 I got some time and, you know, hey, it could be cool stuff. Okay. I'll, uh, yeah. let, let, let's let's uh, meet up. Tell me more about this. Uh, okay, so. I will respond with. Sounds great. I have two people I've been working with as a team lately. Okay, if I bring them along, uh, we could meet at the Liquid Haze Saturday afternoon around 2. Yeah, she, uh, she does respond to that. She's like, okay, yeah, I love the haze. Uh, their, uh, double soy lattes are great. <coughs> hmm. And, uh, she, uh, says, yeah, let's do that. Saturday. Okay. Okay, so that's a thing I will also include in the group text or when I meet up with everybody, whichever happens first, because as soon as Khan's notification comes through, uh, Nea is going to go into a frenzy of getting her shit together so she can run out the door. Right. Um, if she gets a text before she actually gets there, though, um, chances are good she'll do the record scratch screeching breaks? Oh shit, I'm working with other people on this one. Ha, <laughs> right. <laughs> check, 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 check. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, the text went out to all of you, so you you would realize that they got the text. Um, yeah. I'm just saying, she probably wouldn't remember to look at the two <laughs> field right away. <laughs> Understood. This is why Jezzy is blowing up the group chat right now. Yeah. I'm just like going, hey, 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 and sending all sorts of emoji faces until she answers her phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Saturday. Okay. Um, okay. So now Nay is like, okay, hold it. So now she's standing in her entryway going, God. Damn it, why did I, I think about that? <laughs> um, 
Hey, I was getting ready to head downtown to try and catch Khan. Got a thumbs up from Lucia, my streamer, too. She's interested in at least hearing us out. Meeting at Liquid Haze Saturday at 2, question mark? Do it. Excellent. Sounds like a plan. Also about going downtown, should we go downtown? I mean, I'd love to see Daddy Khan again. Big Daddy Khan. But, I mean, I don't want to, like, blow up the spot with this streamer person either. Oh, well, a streamer is not involved in this one. I just, because I just found out about this. Uh... I believe uh, honestly, Jizzy's talking about the... The one who got found, Jolie. Oh, oh, oh. I honestly don't know where I'm going to find Khan. He can sometimes be a little difficult to find. Was just going to hit my usual spots in order until I ran into him. Hmm. Maybe it'd be easier with more eyes? Totally possible. I can't claim to have worked with other people very often before, so this is all new to me. <laughs> well, so I was about, same. <laughs> I am going to make us some sandwiches. Y'all send me a location and let's go find Big Daddy Khan. Okay, so what I'm going to do is send out uh, the locations of the homeless camps I hit on a regular basis. Mm. Um, cause if Khan is looking for me, he'll know to hit me up at one of those places. Yeah, of course. Um, and of course he's met the other two, so he'll know that they are connected to me also. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and then I'll just say I'm taking this camp. Mm -hmm. Call out where you're yeah. going and let me know, let us know if you find him. Okay. Right, we yeah. should kind of triangulate and then work towards the center. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Where we'll have sandwiches. The bridge trolls operate throughout Seattle. They've all, they've got connections everywhere. Um, and it's likely that if you're looking for them, they know that you're looking for them. Yeah, they're watching for you. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't take too long um, for uh, any of them to approach. And it, well, actually, we'll just make that for the next session. Oop. Oh, wow. How is it that late already? Wow. Okay. Holy guacamole. <laughs> It's a good stopping point. I think if I get too far, I might go a little too far. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is going to get us in a fight, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like we're headed for something here. Roll Definitely for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for yeah, yeah. Initiative. Ah. See, Where he didn't speaking? argue that, Alex. That That concerns me. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about different ways of, of engagement. You know, of murdering of, us messily? Well, you know, there's so many different going, ways to do Murder us messily? <laughs> I'm going to have to deal with another little short dude who calls us all kinds of silly words. <laughs> or the no. same one. Or the same one, yes. <laughs> Because that is definitely an option. It's not like we killed him. Which I would are... like to avoid another Terminator. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Because what the <laughs> fuck was that? Not like... too many of those running around. So, I mean, you oh, got lucky. Oh, God. Oh, so what he just did, did is... The, the one we that got we lucky. run into... Yeah, so what he just said is we're going to run into that same one again later. Oh, man. man. Homie said we got lucky, like that was a brunch or something. Yeah. Like, no, we got our asses <laughs> whooped. <laughs> yes, we did. Like we spotted a unicorn or something. <laughs> yeah, no, did. This does not. No, this no. That this is, is a, not that is the most crouching tiger, hidden dragon ass unicorn I've seen in my life. <laughs> Do you know Lord. how? 
I mean, how deadly is a unicorn? Trust me, they're yeah, yeah. Very? They have yeah, a oh, whole very. like thing up here, like a spear. Yeah. Just... Well, and they're equine, so they've got basically knives on the ends of their legs. Yes. And they have the ability to charge. I'm just saying, I'm not fucking with a unicorn either. Like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Th that ain't the kind of problems I I'm trying to have in my life. So, like I said, you know, yes, a hit mark may be the unicorn of the of the technocracy. A hit mark finna get got. <laughs> Tell him come again, come again. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm stronger now. Let's go. I have a blunt and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> I will smoke and that is a threat. <laughs> well, that being said, you guys have the bridge trolls on your side. They are, they have found at least one person that they're keeping an eye on. Um, or rather, they're They've heard of him, and they're keeping eye out to search for him. So. A little, more, little bit more clear. Not sure the text was clear either. Oh, yeah, he, it just said keeping tabs on yeah. him, which could just mean that they know where he is. No contact has been made. They're watching him. Yeah, one can make that assumption. And knowing the bridge trolls, that's probably a lot closer to the truth then. Yeah, we got him right here. Yeah, no, they don't have them cornered. <laughs> mm -mm. So, uh, yeah, it's a good place to stop, and it's a good place to start next time. And, uh... Yeah, it was a great place to stop, apparently. Uh, well, all right, so, um... This has been Seattle at Dawn. Um, I want to make sure I give love to all of my players, um... Not just the ones that you see on screen, but the ones that are off screen or on future screens um, or last week's screen, you know, with the uh, interlude. Um, gosh, yeah. Uh, so Billy Brazil, you see them playing Charlie. Um, Cindy Jones playing Anaya um, and Jezebel being played by uh, Alex Jackson. Uh, all of them. Uh, fantastic friends and players of the game. Um, they've come a long way. Uh, so this is the 11th episode, so if you've been watching, keeping up from the first episode, you've seen the players get more comfortable um, and start understanding the game system a little more, um, more about what they can and can't do. Um, it's one of the things that I like about introducing people to any game system is like, you know, especially like this, where they start learning uh, the nuances of the universe, and they start finding out what, what their, where their power's at. So, yeah, they're in that, 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 that zone uh, where they're, you know, story arc-wise, they've, you know, had a couple ups, they're kind of learning who they are, they're going to move to new heights. Um, and just that 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 arc of gaining more power and knowledge as you know to combat the evils that are out there um i fully suspect that they're going to uh come across some really cool stuff and solve some big problems and become more powerful and then find themselves um the targets of less powerful or even uh threatened powers i don't know why i feel that way uh, it might be because I'm several, several steps ahead of them in terms of like what's happening outside of their little uh, circle. So yeah, the Night Hunters, uh, I feel confident that I can start typing that out and putting that into uh, the headlines now that they are on their, they're on the prowl. So yeah, well, this has been fun. Um I haven't. I've been doing some work behind the scenes while this is playing, so what, listening and pl uh, planning at the same time uh, can sometimes be um, beneficial because it keeps details fresh in my mind. That being said, I hope you enjoyed uh, the episode. Uh, it's Mage Monday. Um, I hope I see you again next Monday or some other time in the future where you see me and I don't see you because it's not really me. It's the past me. Um, I don't really see you right now either. We're kind of invisible to one another, but 
that aside, Mage Monday, thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next time. Goodbye.